Yes, people, welcome back to Food Pushka. If you haven't already, give us a subscribe. And then this week, well. Good morning, people. How are we doing? Oh, I'm so excited to introduce you to this chef today. He has such an interesting story. He worked for Brett Graham at the Lebury, which is one of the top Michelin starred restaurants here in London. Brett also has the Harwood Arms, which is the only Michelin starred pub in London. So he worked for Brett for nine years, both at the pub and the restaurant, at three Michelin stars between the two venues, which is like super impressive. And then on top of that, games won one of the best TV programs here in the UK for food, which is the Great British Menu. And what's wicked about James's food is it's just really bold. He's not scared to like just jump in there with big flavors. I think what's also interesting with James and why I'm keen to meet him is that I know when he opened his first restaurant, he had to step away from that. Um, and uh, I know what that feels like. I had to close my restaurant. Um, and at the time, it feels like the worst thing that could ever happen to you. But like for me, it led to Food Busker and I'm keen to see, well, you know, has it led to better things for him? And so we're going to the pub with James Cocker. It's here in Islington, North London. Great place to eat. Let's go check it. I think it's important for every chef to have identity. So I thought to myself, think about what you brought up when you were younger. Like I remember we used to have like roast dinners and it was like jerk spice lamb with breadfruit, plantain, red potatoes. It was all a bit of a mishmash of stuff, but they're flavors that I kind of remembered from an early age. So it was just kind of, let's peel about the layers and let's do a bit more research into it. So I rang my nan, kind of got a jerk spice recipe. And there's, and there's so many different jerk spice recipes. They have thyme, dry thyme, dry parsley, black pepper, cayenne pepper, paprika, pimento, allspice, cinnamon, nutmeg. The spice just goes on. So it's really just trying to okay, get them cool flavors. Yeah. What it really is. And then just try and make your own. So I've got my own kind of secret recipe. That, uh, that yeah, that's one part I'm really proud. I'm really proud of basically. So we're using the um, chicken thigh. I think it's the best part of the chicken. And basically we've added buttermilk, salt, and then my jerk spice. Buttermilk is an acid, so the longer you leave it, the more tender it's gonna be, and more the spice is gonna bleed into the meat as well. So we usually do it for like two or three days. Okay. In advance. It's a great dish to kind of have at home because you can mean you can add curry spices to it or any kind of spice you want. Yes, and the Better. spice mix. Uh, <laughs> 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 that recipe will be in my headstone, so that's the only way you'll be able to get it. Next up is James's famous Scotch bonnet jam. He takes a load of Scotch bonnets and some red chilli and whacks them in the oven with a load of tomatoes. He roasts them in the oven for about 20 minutes until they're gnarly, burnt and perfect. Next up, it's into a pan with a load of sugar and a serious glug of vinegar. Now it's ready to hit the stove. It's on here for about 30 minutes to let it to reduce down to evaporate all that moisture and get it down to a sticky, gooey, sweet, delicious, chilli jam consistency. Oh mate, look at that. Now it's time to whack it into a blitzer, blitz it for just a couple of minutes, and there you have it. James's Scotch Bonnet Chili Jam. Oh, mate. So we basically just tried to find like a really good kind of crisp batter. I'd worked previously at Ten Bells. I remember we used to use tapioca starch. Okay. And semolina. Uh, so basically, we're just draining the uh, chicken on a J cloth. So here you have my signature dish. This is the um, Jamaican jerk buttermilk chicken, corn nuts, Scotch bonnet jam, coriander crisp, and it's an absolute banger. Thank you, chef. No worries.
Oh, mate. Would you agree? I think you do, don't you? Yeah, I think there's something about fried chicken that just sort of brings us all together. It's one of those ultimate comfort foods that just knocks down all the barriers. It doesn't matter what language you speak or where you come from. Fried chicken just brings people together. And I think that's about James's food. It comes from a background of two Michelin stars and you can taste all that thought and that technique and, and, and his grandma and his heritage in this dish that just, just is like a hug. I can really see what James is doing in that he wants to serve food that's of the highest standard, but that's kind of quite down to earth and inclusive. He just wants you to enjoy the flavor. Bella, what are you saying? What are you saying? You want some fried chicken, don't you? <laughs> it's almost like when your mom cooks for you and you're just ultimate satisfaction, like you're completely in the moment because you're eating that food that just means love. And that's what this dish is. It's just crunchy love. It was great. Yeah. It is so delicious. It's, well, it's got the technique there because you've obsessed to get all that detail in there. The jam is ridiculous. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, it's like, it shouldn't work because of like the jam. It should be yeah. too sickly, but it's not. It's like so beautiful and like, yeah. I don't know. It's a well-rounded dish, isn't it? Yeah. It's got texture, freshness, spice, succulent like chicken. It's just a wonderful I mean, 100% winner, winner, chicken dinner. So that is James Cochran's 1251. Now James has launched a Kickstarter campaign to fund his Scotch Bonnet Jam. And so if you want to show love for the chef, then make sure you click on the link that I leave in the description box. Increase the police, spread the love, and boom. Kind of a secret ingredient, but I don't care. The water has to be boiling, boiling. Boiling, boiling, boiling. 